And we say this all the time. If someone pulls a weapon, you have to assume 100% they're going to use that weapon. There is no going back once someone pulls a weapon on you. I used to have a driver who used to drive me about everywhere and pick me up, drop me off, pick me up, drop me off, drive me all around the place. And I used to give him a percentage of stuff I used to make. So if I made money, my driver would get a percentage of what I made just for being there and driving me about. Anyway, I took the driver around my mate's house one day. Um, and my mate, because I used to be, uh, I used to have all the watches in the world. So I'm going around my mate's house, he's got a load of watches. Marv, do you want this? I said, no, I'm all right for watches in a minute. So my driver said, I want one. Can I get one? So my mate said, is he all right? I said, yeah, he's sweet as a nut. I pay his wages. Get him over once. Monday's come, he's been giving his money. I naturally assume he's gone and paid my mate for the watch, going about a business. A couple of things have happened. About a month later, my mate's rung me up and said, hello, Marv, what's happening, son? I said, I'm all right, mate, you? He said, yeah, he said, I'm a little bit disappointed, Marv. I said, why is that? He said, uh, I was just wondering if you're going to be paying for that watch anytime soon. What, well, ain't he paid for that? Cheeky c***. Hello, mate? Listen, you need to go around and pay for that watch, mate, otherwise I'll punch your f***ing head in, you little c***. Go and pay for the watch. What's the matter with you? What, what you think, because we're not having it, you think you can not pay for the watch? Go and pay for the watch, I'll punch your f***ing head in, you little c***. He's, what's it got to do with you? Now, there's a point of no return. What? What do you mean, you cheeky c***? It's my pal's watch, take it back, otherwise I'm going to punch your f***ing head in. He said, it's got That's nothing to do with you, buttons. why are you getting involved? I said, right, you little c***, where are you? Where are you? I said, I'm down Paul Benoos. I said, I'll be down in a minute. So I've jumped in the mower and the ironic thing about it, I had a 357 Magnum on me. I took it out, I said to my nephew, hold on to that, I'll be back in a minute. He said, where are you going? I said, down the port, I've got to slap this c***'s f***ing head in. So I've jumped in the mower, flew down there. As I pulled up, got out of the car, he's not there. So I've seen his mate. I said, where's your pal? He said, we ain't here, mate. I said, I know he ain't f***ing really. here. Where is he? He's going to be back in a minute. So I've naturally assumed he's gone to get a tool. Sweet, not a problem. I think I'll sit down away with you then. I said, you know it's what this mug's all about? I said, because he owes me money. Did he tell you he owes me money? He said, well, no, he never. W what for? I said, for a fucking watch, mate. He said, do you know what, mate? Why don't you go home and I'll bring him up to the gym tomorrow? I said, no, because if he's going to get a fucking tool, he can use it when he comes back the mug. Right? He said, no, no, go, go. And I, I said, no, fuck that. If he's got a tool, he's got to use it when he comes back the and I'll punch his fucking head in. We refer to this as fronting. You know, you've got to front up to a threat and a risk. So you've got the weapon. What are you going to do with it, mate? With that, in comes Mark. So he's come walking up. So I've seen him. I've jumped up. I said, come on then. Let's go, mate. Right? And he's like, he showed me a gun. I was like, if they're showing you the weapon without drawing it, it's a threat. What on earth are you going to do with that? So now I've walked away from him. I've seen the gun. So I've turned around now. In my head, I've just got to get close enough to grab the gun off him. Because when he says he walked away, I'm assuming that he made a little bit of space because he thought he wasn't going to use the gun. Basically, if someone's going to follow through and threaten you, they've got to do it. And this is just a classic psychological bluff. I didn't believe he would shoot me. I just believed he would wave it about, scream and shout, maybe try to pistol whip me or do something. So I thought, as long as I can get close to him, I can grab hold of him, I'll just smash his f***ing head in and shoot the I'm thinking, get close to him. Strategy, As get I got, close. I say two or three arms away from him. That's important he's to know. He's pulled the gun out. Yeah. So I'm looking arms. him in the eyes. So I'm just walking towards him. I said, mate, if you've come to use it, do what you come to do, bruv. Someone who pulls a weapon is going to use it. Have you got the right distance? Can you close that distance? Is it going to be a hand fight in a gunfight? And I didn't think he'd do it. I thought I'd get, I was maybe three steps away from grabbing the gun and I took two steps and he shot me in this leg and as he shot me in this leg it just disintegrated and I've hit the deck and then basically when he's hit me in the leg I thought you fucking mug obviously you're angry you you fucking do your job you mug and he's walked over me he's done me again and then he's done me again and it was after the third shot that I thought to myself do you know what keep your mouth shut son Keep your mouth shut. Say nothing. Say nothing. And then I actually thought he was going to walk off. And I see him look at me. And he, he had a fault. And now I know what the fault was. He said, this is going to kill me. I've got to kill him. And he just walked up to me and he just went bang, bang, straight in the head. But the first one, as my head's gone back, I thought, oh my God, this just shot me in the face. I can't believe it. I'm going to die. I thought, how come I can still hear something? And I've opened my eye and I thought, wow. And I've seen the, the barrel of the gun and I thought, what the f And then I'll just see the bullet coming towards me. And that's when I've heard the bang. 
And I was like, oh my God, this no way can he kill me. I'm two weeks old. He's got his belly button pierced. He's got his nipple pierced. He's got his tongue pierced. How the can I get killed by this Bang. And then I heard footsteps running off and I was like, gone like that. My knob is just splattered all over my pants, like my leg. Like there was no blood, like in blood, but it was just all fleshy. Like everything was just flesh open. And I was like, wow. Closing in on someone and then allowing them to draw that weapon leads to you being fatally shot because it's unlikely that you can cross that distance quick enough to get to that pistol before it fires. For some reason, I thought I was going to go into shock. So I'm breathing, 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 breathing. I'm on the phone. Right, listen, silly b he's done me, you know. I don't know how many times he's done me, man. Because when a gun fires, it makes two boom, 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 boom for one shot. So I said, I don't know how many times you shot me. You shot me a few times, mate. I don't know. He said, but he shot me in my face, in my face, in my face. I can't feel my face. I can't feel my face. I don't know how many times he shot me, mate. So there's one bullet hole there, and then once right in the eye. And the inside of my eye, you can see, I've still got my retina, and I've still got my optic nerve, and you can see it all moving at the back, because the bullet stopped halfway through my eye, and they don't know what stopped it. And it flattened, flat as a pancake. See, I mean, my femoral artery got punched in three places. I never bled. They told me I'll never walk again. First, I actually thought I was dead. And then I've heard someone say, Marvin, is that you? And I literally, please believe me, I literally thought I was in heaven. And I thought, No, I'll try to ring an ambulance. What's happened? I said, I've been shot. Okay, where? I said, right, I've got twice, or once in the leg, once in my groin, once in my arm, and twice in my head. Silence. I hung up. Hello, hello, hello. I've done this three times before the police had to ring them back. I'm saying, no, 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 it's true, it's true, it's true. I think the key thing from this story is trying to understand the difference in psychology. There's a difference between showing a weapon as a threat and then obviously using the weapon as a threat. And in this case, the situation escalated because both individuals were fronting it. Marv didn't expect the guy to use the weapon and the other guy was just threatening him with it. Fronting also leads to an escalation of emotions, an escalation of aggression. So I guess the point is, don't front when someone threatens you with a handgun. Thanks for watching.